Chef Bill. Good picnic. That's a good food. Everybody's staying around telling stories and comparing some fossils in the back of his uh, truck. Fun. I break her break the I just think it's too I think it was. Oh, really? Oh, this one's just shale. Red algae, coral, brachiopods. These are the tools that we used on uh, the field trip to collect coral and smash dolomite stone to get out trilobites. You also need uh, work gloves. Use your work gloves as well as uh, you definitely want to have safety glasses because when you're doing all this chiseling and you want wrap around edges because these things, the particles of the rock do fly out and strike people even six feet away. There's Joe in your red cap and he found a big head of coral. Ron Fine taking a picture for the uh, graduates of that day. Oh, everybody's uh, chiseling out big heads of coral here. They're the size of tennis balls to uh, bigger than basketballs. All along this line here. It's really a lot of fun. But, uh, uh, it's good clean fun. And it's free from Mother Nature. It takes a lot of chiseling. Uh, you have to chisel out the layers below it and the layers around the side and finally get enough to, uh, to uh, wedge that thing right on out. These are the ones we've collected so far. We've been here maybe 40 minutes. We've got about, oh, I don't know, maybe that's between two or three of us. Jerry found one. It's maybe two and a half feet across. Okay, put your hand in. All right, let's... Okay, Joey dis Joey's discovered something a lot of us have already discovered that everybody made a beeline here that went right into the cliffs and they neglected the ones that fall down that are hidden in the grass. We're right in the top soil. They, uh, here's a perfectly nice uh, coral. needs to be washed up. But uh, this one's about three inches across. And there's a lot of smaller ones. And uh, I've collected several just... Uh, along the edge of the grass, which a lot of people will be looking in the beginning. So the ones in the cliffs take a heck of a lot of pounding to get out, but the ones that are eroded out uh, are easy pickings if you go through the grass and look for them hard enough. We're getting a little bit tuckered out here, getting tired. This is this is mine and Keegan's, oh, Keegan. Keegan's pile, and this is Joey's pile. Joey, this is his first time with the dry dredgers. This is his uh, birthday present from his grandmother. His grandmother's on the right, and that was, this was his birthday present for him to do in a dry dredger today, because he loves fossils. These are the fossil coral heads we collected yesterday and they're all cleaned up and washed now, laying out on the driveway to dry. This shows some of the smaller ones, the smallest ones of all. They're a little bit bigger than a golf ball, but smaller than a, uh, smaller than a tennis ball. This shows the individual chambers. Okay, you can see the uh, the shale that infills these chambers will weather out, and that is after repeated exposure in the winter time. As these freeze, the shale will expand and move outwards and upwards. The fossil itself is a hard crystal, uh, and hard minerals and crystals. This will uh, 
not change shape or size, but the, the sediments will. So right now they're infilled and they're not, the grooves are not very deep. However, let me show you one that's been weathered for, for a few years. This is one collected a few years back. You can see the chambers are much deeper and that's because of all the uh, ice wedging and it's the honeycomb the depth of the honeycomb so to speak the individual chambers much deeper so they'll get much better looking with time as these uh, freeze and thaw after a few winters most people you know these are so large this is uh, this is about the size of a basketball not quite as tall as a basketball but flattened out and this one will uh, these are so big, what, well, what on earth do you do with big fossils like this? We love the act of going out, finding them and collecting them, putting the smaller ones in collections and displaying them at the Gem and Mineral Show or individual uh, fossil collections. But when you get fossils this big, what a lot of people do, they like to uh, decorate their yard with them. And we're going to incorporate these as we have the other uh, fossils around our house in the yardscaping. And the goal is to chisel these out and wedge them out in a way that you don't get too many scratches on them because once those scratches are there they're there forever um, this one came out really nice now this is the wet version what's really nice about this you can see the bottom of it uh, where these chambers grew outwards and to the sides because they were resting flat on the seafloor like this so it's you know, pretty much flat as a pancake So this is the underside of the coral, and you can see the radiating pattern. It's dry now, so it's a very different appearance. It's much lighter colored, and the outer chambers are all dark now. This webpage was made by the Kentucky Geologic Survey and tabulate corals, they're mound shaped. The coral polyps covered the exterior of the mounds. This shows the various stages that started out number one, very small and humble. Number two, a little bit larger. Number three. Number four, the final growth stage, it's much larger. Mounds grew upwards and outwards. These are colonial, colonial creatures. The individual polyps, these things start off as one polyp and they bud or they clone themselves. This is a, so this is a coral polyp, the living chamber, the old living chambers, and the tabulae, where we get the name tabulae. I'd like to give a reminder that I have an entire series of beginner's classes online on video. One of them is devoted entirely to uh, corals. And you can find out far more information on that video. Just uh, do a YouTube search under Cincinnati Fossils or Dry Dredgers, and there's a huge list of uh, beginner's classes to uh, introduce you to these. Again, here's one of the older, the older weathered out coral. The camera is acting as a magnifying glass.